Right, so welcome to part two. If you haven't seen part one, this might not make much sense, so I'll link it in the description to part one. So we're gonna get straight on with it from where we left off. The first job, I'm gonna cut a bit out of the floor so I can get a pin in and out through there. And then I'll make a bush to fit in there so that I can tack it in. So I'm gonna put the cutouts on the outside of the bucket in case them pins ever get stuck. You can still get in from the middle to knock them out. So you can see now I can actually get that pin in and out. And I'll just patch it up from the underneath. So there's not a hole in the floor, but you can still get the pin in. So the next job, I'm gonna make the bush that goes in there. I have some 75 mil round bar there that I'll use. Just once machining down to 72 mil with a 35 mil home, uh, 35 mil hole reamer through the middle. So I've got that drilled out now with a drill. What I'm gonna do is just go in a little tiny bit with a boring bar just to true the end of the hole up. Because what I found sometimes is your drill can go around like that. And then when you try and put a bar, put a reamer in, your reamer ends up wobbling as well. So if you true it up on the end of the boring bar, it, it guarantees that your reamer is gonna run through square and straight without wobbling.
So that's them two made now. They're the bits. They're going to get welded onto the end of there. So I'll put that up into there now, put the other plate in, and then start tacking it all together. But I'll put a pin through there. Even though them holes are worn, it'll do just to get that in the right place. When I renew them, I'll have a bit of tolerance on where I can put them. Because I know when I weld it all up, everything will move. So there's no point trying to get it super accurate now. So I've got my plates sat in there roughly how I want them. I've got a bit of plate tacked on the bottom for it to sit on. Another bit of plate tacked on the side um, for it to put up against. And then I have a bit of plate in between the gap. So I have a little gap for me root pass, you know, my root weld. So now I'm just going to cut a bit of bar to go through them holes to make sure they line up properly. So I've got that round bar through them holes now. We'll put the other side in now. So I've got all them clamped in position. I think I think I'm near enough happy for the most part. The only thing I'm not happy about is there's a bit more gap there than there is there. But when you put a straight edge across from the old plates onto my new plates, everything seems to line up at the bottom. Uh, and they, there's an equal gap between them sides. So that's just how it's gonna have to be, I think. And I've got them pins still in, which is not ideal tacking it together with pins in because when the tacks shrink, the pin will probably jam up, but the pin is sort of helping to keep everything in line, so I'm just gonna have to knock them out. The end of the ram, the end of the ram is fairly worn anyway, so it shouldn't matter too much. So I think I'll make that do. I think I'll put some tacks on it now. So I've tacked these bits of box section across there just to, just to keep the distance right. Uh, I think I'm going to put my root pass a weld in now in this position as it is. And then I'm going to take the bucket off again. So now what I'm going to do is gouge the welds off that hold that onto the bucket and take the bucket off. Right, 
Right, so I've got all that ready, got my runoff plates on, I've cleaned up inside there. But before I start welding, I'm going to make some plates to go over it all. After I finish welding it up, I'll weld some plates over it. But if I cut them out and get them ready now, I won't have to preheat it again. So I'll preheat this, weld it up, put my plates on, and then I won't have to preheat it again because it'll all already be hot. Right, so I've got that drawn out of cardboard. Um, I made it out of cardboard first because I can guarantee you when I get sat down on the computer to draw it, I'll have missed some measurements. So if I've got that to go off, I've got all the measurements there. So that's my pattern. I've got it drawn and I've got it put into sheet cam and nested. So I need four of them cutting out, so there's four of them there. So it's just ready to put on a USB stick now and then take out the plasma and plasma them out. So I've got them four cut out now. Uh, it matches my pattern pretty much perfectly, so that's good. Just a bit of slag to knock off the back and then clean the edges up so the weld better. And then, then they're ready. Right, so we're all ready to weld now. I'll just give it a bit of a preheat first and then I'll get to the welding.
So I'm using Dual Shield Migwire to weld this up. Uh, I haven't had a great deal of experience with Dual Shield, especially in welding in this position. Although the weld didn't look that pretty, when I chopped off the runoff plates I etch tested one of them and I was pretty happy with how much penetration I was getting. So I've got them all filled up and capped off now. Uh, they look horrible on video but in real life they don't look too bad. So I'll grind them flat now and then weld them plates over the, over the top of them. So I've got these plates tacked on the side now. So I've got them plates welded on the side now and I think we'll lift it down, we'll weld them round and then there's some plates to go on the inside, top and bottom as well, so we'll do that.
So that's all welded up now. This bit's about done. I've got that box section welded back in. I welded them round. Um, I put three runs of weld, weld round them, but the last weld sort of protruded past, so I've had to grind them down a little bit. And I think I'm going to leave them box sections in until I get the bucket sat back on it, just in case they splay out when I uh, when I grind them off. So there's a few jobs to do to the bucket, and then we can get it put back together. Well, there wasn't much holding that one in. So I've got the bucket back in now. There's a few jobs to do to finish off on here. I'm going to clean that out. I've made some new ones and then to weld in there. And then there's there to replace as well. I think I might have to cut a hole in the top of that so I can get in from the other side to weld in from the back. Otherwise, we're only going to have a bit of weld around the front and a bit across there. Won't really be enough. So I've got everything cleaned up in here now, ready to weld them in. I've had to cut a hole in there, little inspection hole so I can get to the back side to weld them in. Uh, I've had to cut a bit of bar out so I can weld round that, but the bars aren't doing anything anyway. There's no structural strength in them bars. So I'll put them in, put a bar through, and then I can tack them in and then weld them round. So I've got them welded in now. Um, just had to polish them up a little bit with the die grinder and the sanding wheel because the pin was a bit tight, but still a nice tight fit. So that's good. I've got as much done with the bucket as I can now. So I'm going to sit the bucket back on the frame, put the pins through, and then weld the bushes on the outside of there. Uh, you might notice that I didn't put any wearable bushes in them. And that's because it didn't have any as original and it's I'm just getting it back to workable condition without spending a fortune on it. And if it's lasted this long without any bushes, it'll last 
the end of the life of that bucket before they're worn out. Now, ideally, they wanted line boring through, but the customer doesn't want me to spend a huge amount of money on it, and I can only do the work that the customer's willing to pay for. So I've got them pins in there, now I'm going to cut this box section off. That'll be the moment of truth to see how much everything pulled when I welded it up. So I've got them tacked on now, now I'm going to knock the pin out and then I can weld around them and there's a plate to weld in there and then I need to drill and tap that and put a grease nipple in it um, and then there's just a ram to put in oh, and then them plates to weld in and then it's about done. So another job I nearly forgot about is it needs them um, stops welding back in there. So I'm just going to cut some chunks of 30 mil and weld them on on there like that. So I've got them stops welded in there now. While the bucket's off the frame, I'm just going to give this a quick blast over with some red oxide, just make it look a bit better. So I've got the main pivot pins back in now. Um, I've just got these plates to weld over them holes. I've just put a little press on them just to give the pin a bit of clearance. So I've got them to weld on.
Right, so that's it about finished. I've got them um, patches welded on. Um, I've got them plates welded back in there and I've got a plate welded over where there was a hole in there. So I'll tip it back the right way up and there's just a crack to repair in the back somewhere and it's done. Right, so there it is all back together. Um, I haven't put the hydraulic rams back in yet because they were bent, so the customer was going to get them sorted out. So it's not the nicest of jobs, but it's got the customer a usable bucket again within the budget that they wanted to spend. And I'm pretty sure the work that I've done will well outlast the life that this bucket has left. <laughs>